Believe it or not, Wisconsin has been the scene for some pretty fascinating discoveries of our time. Or at least, that's what we claim. Having heard a story about a small town outside of Green Bay, Marty and I jump in the car. According to what we've heard, this small town is not only said to be inhabited by elves, but also claims, among other things, to be the birthplace of that juicy, all beef patty so many people love, the hamburger. Hey sightseers, Sightseeing Sally here and... Marty. Today we are checking out... Seymour. And why are we checking out Seymour, Marty? It's the place that supposedly the hamburger was invented. Yes, the birthplace of the hamburger is here in Seymour, Wisconsin. Let's go get some burgers. <laughs> well, I don't know if we'll actually get some burgers today, but we're going to go check out the town and see what's interesting about it. Say hello to Seymour, Wisconsin. Home of the first ever American-made hamburger, Seymour is located roughly 15 miles west of Green Bay and has a population of about 3,500 people. In front of me you can see a statue commemorating Hamburger Charlie who apparently back in the day advertised that he sold hamburgers since 1885 at, of all places, the local county fair. According to a news article dated 1947 in the Appleton Post Crescent, Hamburger Charlie got his start in 1885 at the age of 15 when he set up his hamburger stand at the county fair. Back then, those all beef patties that we now call hamburgers were referred to as meatballs. Yes, meatballs. You see, before the hamburger was invented, people ate their cooked ground beef in the form of a meatball. But as Charlie soon found out, meatballs aren't exactly the type of finger food you eat on the run, especially when you're walking around the local county fair dressed in your Sunday best. When Charlie realized people wanted to walk around the fairgrounds and eat, he took his meatball and flattened it between two slices of bread. The first time a meatball had been converted into a flattened hamburger and sold as such. According to the news article, Hamburger Charlie, as he was known, came up with the word hamburger and started promoting his meatball sandwiches as the hamburger sandwich. Now no longer a meatball, Charlie's transformed hamburger was named after Hamburg, Germany, likely because of its familiarity with all the German immigrants living in the area. Allegedly. The reason I say that is just like the ice cream sundae in Two Rivers. They claim the fame and then about three other cities claim it too, so is this the actual birthplace of the hamburger? We'll, we'll find out. Though Marty may doubt the validity of the whole claim to fame here in Seymour, there is one thing that is certain. From that time forward, Charlie returned to the same spot for 65 years, selling his famous hamburger sandwich. They actually have photographic evidence, which, you know, it's kind of hard to dispute that when you have photographs showing that he was selling the hamburger, but as Marty said, I'm sure there are other towns or cities across America, maybe even over in Europe. Playing. Trying to claim the fame. Yeah. So, who got to it first? I don't know. But I'd like to think that here in Wisconsin, we've come up with some pretty cool things. And So why is it such a far stretch that old Hamburger Charlie came up with the first hamburger? Apparently Charlie had a chance, he used to say, when he was walking around the fair. Hamburger, hamburger, hamburger hot, with an onion in the middle and a pickle on top. Make your lips go flippity-flop. Come on over, try and order, fried in butter, listen to it sputter. I don't think good old Marty will be eating anything fried in butter anytime soon. You really expect me to believe that? When burgers are like your second favorite thing of all time? Yeah, that I get once a week as a treat. Once a week. Mm. With usually leftovers, so that really means twice a week. 
And what I was going to say is, how often do you think I'm going to hear that chant now coming from Marty's mouth? Especially the part about butter and splutter. <laughs> splutter? What the hell's a splutter? Well then what was it really? Splutter. See? Listen to it splutter. See, I know you already have it down pat. It's singing in my head right now. Well, if we follow Marty on over here, we get to see this grill where they've cooked the largest hamburger, reportedly, here in Seymour, Wisconsin. Correction, the world's largest hamburger. Apparently, in 2001, they set the world record for 8,266 pounds, but in 1989, they cooked one that was 5,445 pounds. Somewhere between 1989 and 2001, somebody cooked one a little bit heavier than 5,445 pounds, so they did an 8,266 pound one to fix that situation. And apparently, this is where they grilled up that massive burger. Wow, that's a lot of beef. I don't think you'd have any old ladies going, where's the beef <gasps> over that hamburger? And apparently this guy here made a world record in the longest ketchup slide with 200 feet. If you look beyond where that world's largest burger was cooked, you can see they have an active granary here in town. And considering the location of the granary to this path that's now used as like a bike path, walking path, and snowmobile trail in winter, along with the fact that you can see the old railroad depot, I suspect at one time the railroad came right through here. And if you look there, you can see an old refrigerated rail car. The crazy thing is, is years ago when they said refrigerated rail car, they actually put big blocks of ice in there to chill the stuff. But I wonder if this is a car that they brought the beef in on. Well, my saluting skills beg to differ on that. Considering that it says on the side of the rail car, Seymour Cannon Company, peas, beets, mixed vegetables, and other sort of vegetables that have nothing to do with beef. My story, I can tell it any way I want. Oh yeah, <laughs> what are we gonna do with them? Marty is right though in saying that this was an old rail car because it does say here that it was from 1923, which is exactly 100 years old. Officially founded in 1869, Seymour built its first rail station in 1883. At some point in its history, the first station was destroyed and a new one built. Years later, after the railroad had been retired, the station was moved to its present location, where inside you can find a real working model railroad. Well, this looks like something right up your alley, Marty. Well, an old car that moved rail workers up and down the tracks and tools and stuff to work on them. I forget the name of them, but... I thought maybe you'd want to convert it into some kind of rail rider so we could go ride the rails. Out in the desert, yep. Southern California. Out in the canyons. That'd be a lot of fun. For sure. At least it would save us, like, <laughs> hours of walking to get to the cool side. Tons of walking. If you ever get to Seymour, you have to come check out their museum. Not only have they done a fantastic job of putting together everything related to the hamburger, they also have these fabulous interactive displays where at the touch of your finger, you can dive into history. One of the most technologically advanced small town historical museums in the state, the Seymour Community Museum combines genuine historic artifacts from the community with fun interactive displays 
making this one of the best places to discover local history. They even have the old arcade game Burger Time, where you can test your skills at putting together a patty. Does anybody want to challenge me to a round? And in here, you're going to find all the answers proving that Seymour really is the home of the very first hamburger. Like Marty suspected, there are several towns throughout the United States claiming to have invented the hamburger. However, unlike Seymour, which has actual photographic evidence and news articles to back up its claim, these towns don't. In fact, through extensive research, a local historian from Seymour has been able to debunk each of these phony claims, further clinching Seymour's title as the birthplace of the hamburger. For those of you who don't know, every year Seymour celebrates Hamburger Charlie by holding a festival known as Burger Fest. Held typically in August, this year's festival marks 34 years that they've been celebrating Old Hamburger Charlie. In addition to the slew of activities held in the area of the Hamburger Charlie statue, Seymour also hosts a car show and a hot air balloon rally during its yearly Burger Fest. What used to be the Miller Peel office building is now the Seymour Community Historical Society's country store. Inside is set up to look like your typical general store of the early 1900s where you can see all kinds of fascinating relics, many of which were donated by the locals here in Seymour. What I really like about these small town historical museums where the items on display are donated by the locals is that it really gives you a glimpse of what life was like back in the day for the people who lived here. Because you can see for yourself things like the toys that their children played with, the hats that they wore back in the day, the fashion of that time period, things that they used in their homes and businesses. I don't know, to me it seems that to get the best feel for how a community lived back in the day is to be able to see the items that they once used. And of course, tell their stories like this next one I'm about to share with you. If you thought Seymour's only claim to fame was Hamburger Charlie, think again. There was also a time in its history when the infamous John Dillinger and gang came to town. According to the story, nearly $6,000 was taken when two men robbed the Seymour State Bank. Many of the locals believed it was John Dillinger with one of his men. Dillinger, notorious for robbing banks and dodging the law, terrorized the Midwest during a months-long crime spree and wound up evading authorities in a botched FBI raid on the Little Bohemia Lodge located 50-some miles north of Rhinelander, Wisconsin. Turns out, that was just a rumor, as they had fingerprints linking these two men, Merle Vandenbush and Harry Brunette, to the robberies. Though a link to Dillinger was never proven, it is interesting to note that these two men escaped from an Ohio state prison three years after. Dillinger robbed a bank in Bluffton, Ohio. No wonder so many people in Seymour thought their bank had been robbed by the infamous Dillinger and his gang. Interestingly enough, if you look back in Seymour's history, you'll find that this building here, where the Hardware Hank sign is, has always been a hardware store. Another historic place in downtown Seymour that still operates as it was originally intended when it was built back in 1898 is the iconic Hotel Seymour. Though it now mainly operates as a supper club, apparently you can still find yourself a room to stay in as I've been told that there are like five or six rooms that they still rent out. Something I noticed when looking up is that there is a weather vane at the very top of Hotel Seymour. Such a neat looking historic building. Wouldn't it be cool to spend the night there? 
If anybody knows a guy who knows a guy who can hook me up with a night stay here, be, feel free to message me because I would love to spend a night in this historic hotel. Now you know you're in a small town with minimal amount of crime when the police department building appears to be smaller than the gas station that's next door. And this isn't just any old gas station. This is the location of a million dollar lottery ticket winner back in 2021. What do you think the chances are of another million dollar winner? Do you think I should buy a lottery ticket? Let me know in the comment section below. And then across the street from where that winning lottery ticket was sold is Foreman's Bar and Grill. All these years I was wondering what happened to Eric. Now we know. For those of you fascinated by architecture, you might find the design of this church rather unique. Built out of brick, you can see at the top of what I believe is the bell tower, a four-sided clock. It also has a lot of stained glass and these interesting looking turrets painted in white. And for those of you wondering where you can find the very first church here in Seymour, it was built right over here. See, according to the placard, it says original site of the first church of Seymour. Now here's a business I can get really down with. The Forever Love Real Estate Company. Look, they even have a spot for you to sit in the shade with Fido. And check out the really cute mural they have painted on the side. They even have their real estate sign included in the painting. There must be a resident artist in town because everywhere I look there are murals and they're all so beautifully done. By the way, you can find an exact replica of this mural inside the historical museum. This building here, if I had to guess, looks like it was designed and built, oh, maybe sometime in the late 70s, early 80s. And while I don't know what it was originally intended for, I do know that the Family Insurance Center will be coming here sometime soon. Look what we got here. What a fun way to sell refreshments. Too bad it's closed for family vacation. Otherwise, I'd be having to get myself some. Speaking of fun, did you know that Seymour is also home to a number of family-friendly parks plus the county fairgrounds. One thing outsiders to the area may not realize is that Seymour has a really nice public park with a swimming beach slash fishing pond and a really nice playground and picnic area. Now this is the kind of slide I grew up with. And look, they even have a baby version right over there. I'm curious to see this swimming beach and fishing area. Swimming was always something that we did as kids. Not that I'm a strong swimmer or anything, just that we spent a lot of time oh, hanging out at the beach in two rivers or sometimes my parents would take us to some of the smaller inland lakes to swim and that's why I have a fascination. Anytime I run into a small town that has a swimming hole or swimming beach in its city limits, I'm like, gotta check it out. Doesn't look like there's too many people at the local swim park on a day like today, except for a few park workers off in the distance. There's nobody else here except me. <gasps> Marty's over by the car with Molka, you know, because dogs aren't allowed in this part of the park. I imagine on a hot summer day, this place is packed, but even on a day like today, it still is really nice to be here. You got the birds chirping in the background, the huge mature oak 
towering over you. And the three little pigs that look like they're off to the races. I have to say that this playground here just reminds me so much of my childhood because unlike the more updated modern counterparts, this is what we used to play on as kids. You know, the swings with the chain links and the old rickety merry-go-round. And the old trapeze bar to inspire all those would-be Olympic hopefuls. Ta-da! <laughs> Nearly knocked myself out with the bar. And don't ask me how many times I had to attempt that to get it right. Moving on. If you didn't know, Seymour also happens to be the location of the Outagamie County Fair, a local tradition since 1884. This is the same county fair where Hamburger Charlie first set up his stand and invented the hamburger. And then directly across the street, you can get yourself a tour of the elves. Thursday through Sunday, 10 to 5. I'd go over there now, but there is a sign saying it's closed. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to check out the elves today. Though we weren't able to check out what kind of elves inhabit Seymour, we did find real evidence during our visit that Seymour is indeed the birthplace of the American hamburger. Coupled with the other discoveries we made while exploring the town, I'd say our time in Seymour was well spent. Until next time, this is Sightseeing Sally.